to Act One, Scene One's 2018 production of Big Top Nonstop, featuring Journey of the Noble Narble. At this time, we ask that you silence all cell phones and take note of the exits located throughout the auditorium. Flash photography is strictly prohibited. We kindly ask that you refrain from videotaping as this production is being professionally recorded by Brockton Community Access. We would like to take this opportunity to thank our sponsors and especially the parents of the 61 performers for your cooperation and support. And now, Act One, Scene One proudly presents Big Top Nonstop!
Welcome to Big Top Nonstop. We have tightrope walkers, fire breathers, jugglers, and strongmen. Ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on, come on. Step right up. Sit right down. And hear the greatest stories on earth. Stories of faith. Greed. And bravery. Stories to teach. For dazzle. Amaze. Entertain. 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 And where better to hear these stories but here? Under the Storytime Big Top. Now on with the show. Let us begin with our very own Big Top band, the Bremen Town Musician. Sisters Gruff. Welcome, Baby Goats Gruff. <laughs> Sister Goats Gruff. And the leader of the Sisters Gruff, Big Bella Goats Gruff. <laughs> this family of sisters lived in a meadow far away where they would spend their idyllic days. Nibbling. Chomping, grazing. On the green, green grass. I'm tired of eating this grass. I want some of that grass. How many times do I have to tell you? You need to be happy with the grass you have. Stay over on this side of the bridge with the rest of your family. But why? That grass looks so much better than this old nasty stuff. I don't see what the big deal is. How can she not see what the big deal is? Um, tell her what the big deal is. The big deal is that this grass is safe and that grass is dangerous. Got it? Goats that eat together, keep together. Eat, eat together, together, keep together. together. Got, Got it. it. Good. Lucky us, we all get to eat safe grass. Safe, nasty grass. But if we have to be miserable, at least we're miserable together. Fine. You want better grass? I will go and find us some better grass. Some better, safe grass. Wow, what's her problem? Was it something I said? You and your piggy eating. That's her problem. I can't help it if I have a sophisticated palate for fine flora. 
Call me a lawn specialist, a garden connoisseur, a picky eater who talks too much. I'm gonna go see if Big needs any help finding some greener pastures. And while I'm gone, you stick to eating the grass right where you are. Understood? Okay, okay, I'll eat the grass where I am. And if I cross the bridge, I will get to eat the grass where I am. Just then, the troll who owns this bridge came home and saw the little goat. She was none too pleased. Who is that standing on my bridge? Who said that? I did. The troll who owns this bridge? If you want to get across, you'll have to pay to get across. It is a troll bridge, you know. A troll bridge? But I don't have any money. I'm just a sweet little goat, weak from lack of food. I just wanted to nibble on some of that grass over there. No money, no pass, no nibble. Okay, Mrs. Greedy Pants, I've had just enough of you and your troll bridge. Look, I don't want any trouble. Pay the troll when you can pass. I can't pay you, but my big sister can. Sister, give the troll some cash. Why, you, you were told to stay on this side of the bridge. Come back over here before Big comes back or you're really in trouble. Okay, okay, don't get your britches in a wad. I'm on my way. Um, excuse me, Mrs. Troll, but I need to go home, so if you would just let me pass. Look, kid, you already owe me for the first time you got over my bridge. You're not getting by me again, again unless someone pays the troll. You want to be with your kid's sister? Pay the troll. She, she's right. Why don't you pay the troll? Besides, if, if you pay the troll anyways, you can come here to gre eat greener, eat better grass. The grass over here is way greener. It does look greener and thicker and... Are you coming over or not? I'm coming over. Then you gotta pay the troll. Pay for yourself and your bratty sister. About that. I kind of only have enough to pay for one of us, but you know, if you let me cross, I promise our big sister will take care of everything. Promise? Goat's honor. Fine, go ahead. Should have listened to my mother who became a dentist. <laughs> you looking for your sisters? They're over there on the other side of my bridge. What? And just what are they doing on the other side? You were clearly told to stay put on this side. Well, they didn't, and since I've been assured that you want to go over to, cross over to be with them, you have to pay the troll. That's me. I take local checks and credit cards, of course. I'm not paying any troll. Well, if you want to cross over to be with them, well, they can't cross over to you without paying a troll, and you can't cross over to them without paying a troll, so it seems that someone will be paying the troll. I'm not going anywhere. This side is just fine with me. And besides, I found a really nice meadow just up the hill. I think I'll go there instead. If they want to come home, they can figure out how. But you can't just leave us here. What are we going to do? Have you found your grass? Now eat it. Mrs. Troll, good day. Who's going to take care of us? Forget the us. Who's going to take care of me? What I want to know is who's going to pay the troll? <laughs> I got to lie down. This grass is nasty. I like the other grass better. What? You need to learn to be satisfied with what you have. And just because the grass on the other side is greener, doesn't mean it tastes better. selling his hats. I've got big hats. I've got small hats. I got short hats. I got tall hats. Hats for one, hats for all. No head too big, no head too small. Whew. I've been selling hats all morning. I think I'll have a seat and eat my lunch. This looks like a good place. And so the hat man sat down and began to eat his lunch. He didn't know it, but hidden in the bushes were a bunch of silly, 
just have to leave. Oh, how depressing. <laughs> now, now, no need to sing the blues. Wait a minute. I'm on my way to become a musician. Why don't you come with me? Why, with our talent, we're sure to be a success. Do you really think so? I know so. Well, okay. On to town to become musicians. Settling down for an afternoon nap. Yeah, I just love a good afternoon nap. It wasn't long until a little mouse came along the path. She was also looking for a place to take an afternoon nap. Ah, I just love a good afternoon nap. This rock looks like a great place to snuggle up. Why, you little pipsqueak? Please, Your Majesty, please let me go. Why should I? You might just make the perfect after-nap snack. A snack? Oh, no. I would make a horrible snack. Not enough meat for the effort. Far too bony. I may even give you a furball. No, I would be a better service to you alive than a snack food. And what could you possibly do for me? You're far too little to be of any real service. Oh, that's not true. I may be little, but I can do a lot. Let me go and you'll see how helpful I can be. <sighs> all right, all right, go on. Just let me get back to my nap. Oh, thank you, Your Majesty. One day you'll see all repay the favor. And with that, she walked quickly away. We're going on a lion hunt. We're going on a lion hunt. We're going on a lion hunt. The mouse was startled when she heard the lion's cries and rushed to see what was going on. When she arrived, she knew just what to do. Don't worry, Your Majesty, I know just what to do. Oh, little mouse, thank goodness you're here. Hurry, here they come. Okay, let's get it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, little friend, I was right in letting you go, but wrong in doubting you. Forgive me? Forgiven. Being little doesn't mean you can't help. And when you're nice to others, they'll be nice to you. Shall we?
What is that noise? <laughs> <laughs> be that bad. <laughs> yes, I can. Things can be just awful. My master's gonna sell me. Sell you off? But why? Because I'm worthless, that's why. I can't pull a plow. I can't even get pony rides anymore. My master is right. I am good for nothing. Good for nothing, my foot. That's what our master told us too. And we're not good for nothing. We're quite exceptional <laughs> things. I wish I could sing like that. You can do anything if you put your mind to it. Come on and give it a try. Donkey, we're going into town to become musicians, and we want you to come with us. Why, that's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. <laughs> I'd love to. Along too? Sure. Shake a wing. Let's dart, ducks. And 
the way they raced to tell that king, they sped along when they met up with that land down, Goosey Lucy, and that he hunk Gander Lander. What words, birds? Why so flighty? Shake, rattle, and roll. The sky is falling down. It's coming on down. Penny Penny saw it. Goosebump. Jump! Jump! The Goose and Gander make you jump! Jump! The Duck and Drake makes you jump! Jump! The Honey Penny makes you jump! Jump! <laughs> and away they went to tell the king. And away they raced to tell the king. By and by, while on the fly, they blew into Turkey Lucky. Why the scowl, fowl? Jay! Rattle and roll! The sky is falling down. It's coming on down. Penny Penny saw it and heard it. And it smacked her on her fine red comb. We're zipping to tell the king. Broody! Snap, Turkey Larky. May I flock along? Sure, but don't loiter, Lurky. Let's launch! Full throttle! And away they race to tell that king. Hell and Mal and after a spell, they collided with that mean ball of fur, Foxy Loxy. Going bonkers, honkers, out in such foul weather. Shake, rattle, and roll. The sky is falling down. It's coming on down. Penny Penny saw it. Mm -hmm. And heard it. Mm -hmm. And it smacked her on her fine red comb. We're, we're steaming to tell the king. We're off to tell the king! Oh, murky. Turkey. Drew Foxy Loxy. But she smiled as though it might not be as beastly bad as that. Do you find feathered friends know the fast track to the king? Turkey Larky looked at Gander Lander. Gander Lander looked at Goosey Lucy. Goosey Lucy looked at Drake Cake. Drake Cakes looked at Ducky Lucky. Ducky Lucky looked at Cocky Locky. Cocky Locky looked at Henny Penny who shook her red head. No! Throw in the towel, foul. Thought Foxy Loxy as she considered the fine meal coming her way. But with impeccable manners and charming hospitality, she really said. <laughs> You're in luck, Duck. Looking juicy goosey. If I knew you were coming, I would have baked a cake. Drake. Turkey jerky. Lurky. Let's meander, Gander. Lead the flock. Lock. And so we meet again. And it'd be my pleasure to show you the way. In a way they raced to tell that king. Foxy Loxy led them to a dank, dark, Cave by the side of a dark, dark, dank, dank riverbank. Turkey Lurkey was the first one in. Leaping gizzards, what a prank! Who with a? Go, go! That sly foxy loxy wolf down poor Turkey Lurkey. What's a? <laughs> that fleazy foxy loxy gobbled up a um, Ganderlander and Goosey Lucy. With a? Cunning cat, Foxy Loxy, wolfed down poor Ducky Lucky and Drake Cake. <laughs> but when Penny Penny heard, she. Cluck, cluck, cluck! Chickabunga! I forgot to lay my egg today! She jumped, she pumped, and she ran as fast as her legs would take her. Hmm, I never did tell the king the sky was falling. Oh well.
style of theater that seems to break all the rules. Avant-garde, perhaps the only rule in avant-garde is there are no rules. Some people consider it to be deep and meaningful theater filled with symbolism and metaphor to enlighten one's inner soul. And some people just think it's weird. You decide. Now let us journey together as we share our experience entitled, Call the Moment Red. I am a tree. Life is a tree. I am a deceiver. Deceiver! Deceiver! I lay wait by this tree. I am a tree. I fall. Trees fall. No! Trees are all off, fell. Allow me. I didn't need to fell you. You are kind. Beware of what kind. Where are you going? Does anyone truly know their destination? Goodies, with goodies. And who are you? I'm still searching to find who I am. But what is your name? Red. Red like the sun, red like the cardinal. Take flight, little cardinal. Take flight from this one. I am Lou. Deceiver, deceiver. Lou means wolf. Beware. May I journey with you? A journey with a friend takes you to a better place. Beware. pleasure that I introduce to you the rhyming pantomimers of O So Mia Mayo, Italy. Please put your hands together with glee for the Quacker Jacks of ring number three. in the sky blue seas where everything is bellissimo. We have beautiful music, Vivaldi, Verdi, Puccini, beautiful art, Raphael, Da Vinci, Michelangelo, beautiful vineyards full of grapes of every variety, and our dispositions match our climate, full of sun, always there is much laughter. <laughs> After all, what other country is famous for such funny food? Pasta fazoli, tortelloni, ravioli, scallopi, calamari, vermicelli. How can life be serious with a long, wiggly noodle dangling from of your mouth? Everyone laughs, except for a certain princess. The princess I'm referring to is Princess Constantia, known for short as. Princess Constantia, sour grapes, gloom and doom, gorgonzola face. 
We would tell you the longer version of her name, but we wouldn't want to offend anyone. Our story begins one day at the palace. Jester, another riddle. What do you call an unemployed jester? Nobody's fool! <laughs> Why so glum, princess? Daughter, are you angry? Not in the least. Then laugh! Not if my life depended on it. Life is too somber. Starving peasants, bubonic plagues, bloody battles, and no tidy bowl for the chamber pots. Dear, dear, why are you so serious? I have an idea. No funny bone. No, no funny, funny bone. No funny bone. I've all the bones I need. A bit of battle. A sprinkle of sweet with the sour. Some sunshine through the clouds. A lark amongst crows. Perhaps if you were to marry. Frivolous princess taught my most unfunny list. I've got it. Do, 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 do. Whoever you marry must first make you laugh. Very well, but with this condition. Do, 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 do. Anyone who tries to laugh and fails will have his head cut off. <gasps> That's a scream. I'm dying to see this. Sour grace, gloom and doom, gorgeous old face. face. Come, daughter, we'll announce the news throughout the kingdom. Later, in a village far away, in the big toe of the Italian boot, Pasquale, the son of a shepherd, came in from the field. Pasquale had a regretful case of flaky scallops. Mom. I've decided to win the hand of Princess Constanzia. Pasquale, have you lost your mind? This is no laughing matter. Don't worry, Mama. I'll find a way. Don't be silly, Pasquale. You'll lose your head. No, Mama. I'll have their crown. A prince with flaky scalp? You'll lose your head. Here in the village, everyone makes fun of me because of my flaky scalp. Well, look at it this way. I'll either gain a kingdom or be rid of my problem. <laughs> Take these three loaves of bread and these three florins I've saved. Keep your head about you, my son. Arrivederci, bambino. Arrivederci. Pasquale walked and walked until he met a hungry soul trudging along the road and mumbling. Mumble, mumble, mumble. Buongiorno, my friend. What's that you say? My stomach is grumbling to my feet and my feet are grumbling back. What are they grumbling about? My stomach says it has nothing to carry and my feet grumble that they have too much to carry. Here, have some of my bread. At least your stomach will have less to grumble about. Grazie, grazie. This will make up for no supper last night. Here. Grazie, grazie. This will make up for no breakfast. <laughs> no breakfast! <laughs> grazie, grazie. I wish I could fix your flaky scalp, but I have nothing in return except my poor thanks and my good wishes. Arrivederci, good fellow. Arrivederci, my friend. How could I begrudge that poor soul a bit of bread when I have money to buy more? Quack, quack! Stick to my back. Buongiorno, my lad. Where are you going? I'm off to the palace to make Princess Constanzia laugh so I can become the prince. With flaky scalp? Quack, quack! That is a laugh. I say, could you spare some money for a poor soul? Oh, well, of course. Here. Here. Have two. Here, take them all. I'll soon earn half the kingdom and have all the money I ever dreamed of. Grazie, Grazie, you are a generous lad. And to reward you for your kind deed, I gift you my goose. It is a magic goose. Magic? See, si, magic. Listen carefully. Whenever anyone touches me, I call out, Quack, quack! You must immediately reply, Stick to my back. Quack, quack! Stick to my back. Bravo, bravo. You're not as flaky as you appear to be. Arrivederci, <laughs> my pretty silly goose. Arrivederci, my poor old onion and my friend. Arrivederci, my friend. Arrivederci. Quack, quack! Stick to my back. Quack, quack! Stick to my back. Meanwhile, back at the palace, life was a riot. And then, the octopus said, I can't. I'm left-handed. <laughs>
I'm going to make your metro blues vanish into thin air. For you, my flower. <laughs> oh, take him away! Buy me with only my card trick. It'll kill you. We are not amused. Jailer, pick a card, any card. No more tricks. OK, you can cut the deck first. <gasps> my cards! My! <laughs> Dead time. I mean bedtime. Time to head off to. Uh, Everyone in the kingdom was beginning to feel like doom and gloom, except for Squally, who was certain he could make the princess laugh. Ah, silly goose, an inn. We can get a good night's rest before we arrive at the palace. Knock, knock. What a sad, good fellow. Good evening, kind innkeeper. Uh, my friend and I would like a room for the night. Two florin for a straw mattress, three florin for a goose down bed. Quack, quack! Well, you see, I gave my last floor into a woman who- Another free letter. Forget it, I suppose you're hungry, too. Fairy, you see, I gave all my- Out! Out! Mama, let him stay. He has to do. <sighs> Very well. I'll give you a room, but the goose will have to stay outside. Thank you, kind lady keeper. But whatever is good enough for my goose is good enough for me. We'll both sleep outside. Fine goose. Let's cook it up with soft stuffing tonight. And we'll have goose down pillows for nights to come. Quack, quack! Stick to my back? What the? Help, help, I'm stuck. Come get me loose. Here, let me pull you. Quack, quack! Stick to my back? Well, that will teach you not to steal. It's almost morning. You must be off to the palace to make the princess laugh. What about us? I guess you have to come along. No! no. Let me go! It's too late for that. Rosina? Anna, come back here. You have chores to do. Do the two of you have onions for your descent? Get back here. Quack, quack. Back to my back. What is the meaning of this? I'll have you arrested, you scoundrel. Arrested? You were the ones trying to steal my goose. Now you're stuck to yourselves. Come along. Ow. You stepped on my toe. You clumsy. Oh. Don't go so fast. All together now. One, two. One, two. The odd-looking procession went down the path to the palace, when whom should they meet but the school teacher? Shame on you! Is this any way of going about it this time of day? I'll teach you a lesson or two. Quack, quack! Get to my back. What the? Young man, let me loose! I'm afraid you're stuck with a little math problem. One bird plus three would-be goosenappers plus you equals... Equals trouble! I have a room full of students! For me. And I have the kingdom waiting for me, so mind your step. One, two, one, two. They hadn't gone very far when they met up with some field workers. You there? Yes. Come and help us loose. I wouldn't advise that. Do as I say and pull hard. Okay. We don't have much time. But we'll give a try. Quack, quack. Stick to my back. Let us go. We have work to do. Well, so have I. So come along. One, two. One, two. So off they went. On their way to the palace, the cook, who was out getting turnips from the gardener, saw the odd-looking parade and both stared in amazement. Gardener, look! It goes from my stew pot. Wait, cook, call the jailer. Nonsense. Come help me catch that goose. Quack, quack! Stick to my back. I am Pasquale the Peasant. <laughs> Good day, Pasquale! <laughs> the laughter of the jailer and the desperate attracted the king. Attracted the king. Your Majesty, this is Pasquale the Peasant! <laughs> daughter, daughter, come quick! <laughs> what is so funny? 
amusing in the least. This is ridiculous. This is silly. This is... <laughs> She's laughing. Princess is laughing. <laughs> Daughter, you're laughing out loud. I can't help it. He's just so funny with his flicky scalp and his silly quack quack. Stick to my back. With his of quack quack. Stick to my back. Everyone was smiling, even the princess. This is our new prince, Prince Pasquale. He will ensure that our land is very sunny with laughter. And never in all of Italy was there such a merry wedding. Quack, quack! Stick, Stick to, to my back! back.
been a marvelous audience. Kind ladies, kind gentlemen. A drum roll, please, Ethan. I now present to you our first grand finale and main attraction. I draw your attention center stage, where you will see the magic of the Big Top in all of its glory. An entire ocean scene. Bedazzled with tiny fish, fantastic fish, and one with a wish, who will reenact his story tonight for you. Another drum roll, please, Ethan. I present to you the journey of the noble marble. swam that high their fins were much too small their tails were thin and floppy which didn't help at all but this narble liked his fins and had no problem with his tail so when he woke he knew that he just wouldn't couldn't To swim to the top of the ocean I want to see the sky I want to flip through the top of the ocean Hey, we're going mud vlogging today, you in? Not this time, today I plan to see the sky Uh-oh, here we go again Why can't you just be happy with what you have done here? Aren't you tired of always being around mud and sand and blyfish all day? I love mud and sides, this is where meant to be Yeah, just look at us, tiny fins, floppy tails We belong here in the dark where nobody can see us But I know I can make it up there I know it's never been done before, so why even try? Remember They don't understand what I see every night when I close my eyes. Every night I dream sunlight. Every night I dream sky. Every night I'm a narble swimming high up above where the waves are crashing. And the water's warm and bright. And I jump through the air and splash in. says why try you're just a little normal oh no here come the bly fish hey looky here this little narval this is gonna swim up to see the sky <laughs> huh how is he supposed to do that without any flappers or pokers i just don't see that happening <laughs>
gush and flew right by the herd of floating, feeding pickle fosh. His fins were getting tired, but he knew he couldn't stop. I'll just keep swimming faster. I've got to reach the The narvel with their fins. They grabbed him by his tail and brought him right up to their chins. Ooh la la, Francois. Have you ever seen a fish like this before? I must certainly have not. Just look at that tail. It reminds me of that 1974 Bilobo back near Lippo Cove. That was a meal to remember. its upsides. So the narble just kept swimming and he didn't dare to stop until he heard the sound of a great big bubble. Pop, pop, pop. tell you, those lunchtime seaweed salads do not fill me up. I know, man. We need some protein. Seriously. I'm so hungry, I can eat a fly fish. I'm so hungry, I can eat a waddle. I'm so hungry, hey, I can hey, eat a... Hey, hey, Look over here. You see what I see? Looks like someone's in the wrong place at the wrong time. You mean at the right place at the right time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, you know what I'm... Let's keep our calm. Let's do this one with style. Yeah. seen a narble try to swim this high before what is it little fishy that you're up here looking for i'm trying to swim to the top of the ocean i'm trying to see the sky i want to flip through the top of the ocean well, sorry, little narble, but we cannot let you go. It's not the level of dinner time. Come on, start the show. But I just want to. You see, breakfast at the start of the day. Well, it's not my favorite. And lunchtime, seaweed salad and kelp has lost all its appeal. But as the day goes on, my hunger starts to grow. Oh, itty bitty narble, should have stayed. Dinner time, dinner time, dinner time, and I think that something is you. Oh, I want a tasty little novel to lie. Summer love with dinner time, come on, have a seat. Dinner time. 
number is right before dinner time. Oh, well, let's go. for saving me back there. No worries. We're the Glinny Glim, the best swimmers in the whole ocean. Watch this. Whoa! Hey, what are you doing up here anyway? Aren't Narble's bottom feeders? Well, I wanted to see the sky, but now I think I should go back to where I started. I didn't realize there'd be so many hungry fish out to get me. You can't turn back. You've already come so far. I know, but my fins are getting really tired. And I can't even see the top yet. And I've almost been eaten by two groups of fish. Maybe my friends were right. Maybe I'm not that special. Maybe I'm not that strong. Maybe I should go back where I belong Where the water's murky Where it's safe on the ocean floor Maybe they were right about me I'm just not meant to explore Forget what everyone else said. If you want to see the sky, you should see the sky. Yeah, you can't let anyone get in the way of something you really, really want. You know, I think someone could use a little Glinny motivation. I know exactly what you mean. Hey, Glinnies, what do you say we show this little narble how to cheer up? some synchronized swim moves near the coral abyss. You can do it on your own. Just remember to keep your fins up. Thanks for everything. Bye. We Bye. believe in you. Bye. Bye. Oh, was it a 
sight But just before he made it to the surface of the sea A giant blink swam right by and swallowed him Is anyone there? It sure is dark in here. No, I will not end my journey inside the belly of a plink. I gotta get out of here, but how? Just then the normal thought of his friends, the glenny glim. He thought of what they told him when things looked dark and grim. When you're feeling like everything is against you, and you're stuck in a place that's lonely and dim, just remember the glinny and you'll be And shook his everything His mouth was open long enough For the narwhal to swim free He swam so fast the giant blink Did not have time to see
to say. Two hours ago we didn't have this and then all of a sudden there it was. Uh, they're amazing. I think that uh, probably what many of you don't realize is that although the program runs for five weeks, we put the show together in two weeks because the first three weeks we do other things. We have many things to do. We're a very busy group. But the show itself actually goes up in two weeks. And um, I don't know about you, parents, citizens of the city, people who are surrounding towns or whatever, but I am very proud of these young people, and I hope that you are too. And, and for those of you, the parents, who really care enough that these kids can come here and get to the rehearsals, we thank you because that's so important in their lives, the fact that there are adults who care enough that they have this kind of inexperience and an enrichment in their lives in Brockton. We do have an enrichment program, and it has been going on for 44 years, the longest running one around. And with that, I'm not going to say anything anymore, but just that we are all the teachers and the, the great staff that we have are extremely proud of these young people tonight. So it's time to present an award that I believe is in, has been presented since 2013, and it is the Jean Herbert Annual Scholarship Award that we present to a member of the cast to pursue this program again next summer. Uh, there are so many wonderful young people that we have to choose from, and um, the person in whose name this award is presented is Jean Herbert, and she was the secretary for the first community school program when, it, when this high school opened in 1971, or 70, I believe it was, in Brockton. Uh, I won't say that I wasn't here because I probably was hanging around at that time. But, um, and Jean was someone whom everyone loved, who was a wonderful secretary, who believed in the youth and believed in the programs that we had and did a stupendous job for the whole city and the whole community school and then went on to be secretary to the superintendent of schools in Brockton for many years. And I was a personal friend of Jean, so this award presenting it means a lot to me and it means a lot to her sister and to her friends who are here in the audience tonight. So without further ado, I would like to present the recipients who were nominated by the staff uh, of, and we have two this evening because we couldn't come to a decision because both of them are great. And if there are two great people, why only give it to one? So we have many great people, but the two young people who are getting the Jean Herbert Scholarship Award this year are in no particular order, it's just the way I open them. Mia Alves. has been with us since she was very young, and she still is very young, but she was very, very young, and now she's just very, very young. <laughs> and the second scholarship award is presented to, drum roll, K Ethan, <laughs> no. is presented to 
Caden Perkins. <laughs> selfish on our part because we don't want to ever lose them from this program. We, we lose kids and they go on and they do great things but they come back but we like to know they have their start here and tonight the interlude from one scene so costumes could get, could get changed to the other were two young people who performed in the novel, the noble novel when we did it in 2012, I believe it was. And um, they're products of Act One, Scene One, and are now studying in college and are doing theater. <laughs> High school! So, uh, I have nothing more to say except that I hope you loved the program as much as we loved performing it for you. And come back and shout cheers of these kids throughout the city. Thank you all. Good night. Thank you.